Well, good evening. Sunday night church. Everybody's closing down church. We got church open. You know, the... I saw a guy. He's a famous man. Uh, I don't know much about him. I think he's a. I think he's a singer. I ain't into modern singing and all that, but I think I think he's a a, a famous singer. His um, I just seen it. I, I preach on Facebook and I catch a couple of things once in a while. But the the thing that I it caught my eye was um, he had made a statement. He was a member of a church uh, called Hillsong. Now, Hillsong is very famous for music, praise music. They started, I think their main church is in uh, New Zealand. They have churches in, and they have a big church in New York, a big church in L.A., I believe. And their big deal is singing. And they're kind of a, the guy in New, New, New Zealand, I've heard him preach a few times, and their music sells, they sell tons of money. I mean, music, they sell big time music, praise music. And uh, they probably got good singers and this and other thing. They, they sing them 7-Eleven songs, you know. Seven words repeated 11 times. <laughs> Not much scripture in them, maybe a little bit once in a while. But a guy named Justin Bieber, that'd probably hit some familiar notes. I think he's a singer, but he claimed to be a a, a member of the of the Hillsong Church. I believe he's in the New York. It seems he would be in the L.A. Church though, because I think them singers and theatrical people and stuff they're in L.A. most. But it could be in New York. But he made a comment. He quit the church and the, the Hillsong Church, and 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 he said, uh, "Not a very spiritual man at all." I I, I think he kind of sings. I don't think he's like a rock singer or a crazy singer. I think he's kind of a mellow singer. I don't know much about him, but that's about all I know about him. I think he made a lot of money. He might have got famous on one of these. Uh, one of the singing programs, American Idol, probably, probably American Idol. That name of that program uh, tells on itself, doesn't it? God says we ain't supposed to have no idols, amen? Ain't supposed to have no idols. So, but, um, oh, he probably knows all about them. He just walked in, Victor just walked in. You know anything about the the singer Justin Bieber. Do you know anything about him? Not really, no. No. But he's a famous singer. Isn't he? Yeah. I think he's a famous singer. Yeah. Well, he just quit the hill, so I'm just telling him. We're, just going to, we're in uh, Matthew 7. That's what we're teaching today. Oh. And But anyway, uh, he quit that church, and, and they said, we're going to go to church and that. And he says... Uh, the church is in you. The church is invisible. And he know what he's talking about. Because if you knew the first thing about the Bible, the word church, ecclesia, that's an assembly. You got to get together. You got to have church. We're, we're really getting it at, at a lot of churches, even now with the uh, uh, with the China flu deal. They call it a different name, but come from China. They made it up in a laboratory and it went all over the world, killed a lot of people. Anyway, uh, with that, now we're really going to this virtual church. You know, everything's virtual. Talked to a doctor the other day. They, I called the doctor about something. Not, not important. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. But they said, uh, the nurse said, uh, we're going to, uh, uh, the doctor's not having any appointments any more that if you want to see him, it's going to have to be virtual virtual. I said, well, I want to see that. I, I, you know, I talked to him much a lot of times. I told the nurse, I said, if I want to see the doctor, I want to see the doctor. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't want to see him on a screen. 
I got a problem. I want them to look at it. I want them to touch it and take my temperature and <laughs> take my heartbeat and my, put a thing on my finger. I, I don't want it virtual. I said, I might as well talk to him on the telephone. What 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 good am I going to see his face? He's going to see my face, and he can't see me. I mean, really, see, got to see the doctor. And the church has to be a gathering. That's where they're, they're making they're making such a, a fuss. And they tell you, don't you know? You can't gather more than ten people. Oh yeah, huh? Who said that? <laughs> they try to tell you that stuff. I mean, people try to tell you, like doctors, people, they say, no, you can only have 10 people. They got to do this. Gotta... We're having church. Now, this ain't going to make you people out there on Facebook and YouTube feel very good, but um, you got to come to the building, 501 Ridgewood Avenue, Holly Hill. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay. Matthew 7. Verse 1, judge not that you be not judged. Oh, boy. Don't we have a bunch of, I mean, a lot of time. I'm talking about church folks now. I'm talking about Christian people. they judging everybody, you know? I can't judge folks. Now, I can judge this. I can see if you're drunk, stumble in my church start cursing me and cause trouble in church, I can judge that. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it, it ain't like, well, someone come in here drunk and cursing me and going to fight with the folks. Don't judge that. Pe oh, yeah, I'm going to judge that. I'm going to deal with it, too. We we had someone this morning out in the front. Uh, even before I got here to church, it causing some chaos out in the front. And they said that, and they said that. And then, and then when I got here, it won't cause trouble. And I says, no, we can't do that. And uh, not, don't get me wrong. If if it's a situation needs to be dealt with like that was, you got to judge it. I, I'm just telling about we we don't know a person's heart. I don't know your heart, but I can see what you do. I can see what you do. I can see what you. I can see what you do. I can see what you do. Now, a lot of times, well, anyway, let's go on here. 7-1, judge not that ye be not judged. That's a, real, that's a real easy verse, isn't it? Some of you so afraid of, of, of like Willie Lewis, uh, he's just, he just been saved. Now, Willie, I call him son, he calls me dad. Uh, he's a little 10-year-old boy in, in the projects here in Milwaukee. He got saved in the Sunday school. He's 50 now. He's been saved 40 years. Still calls me dad. I still call him son. He didn't know who his dad was. A lot of times that happens in the projects. You know, poor little kids don't even know who daddy is. And and, and uh, it, that's that's a sad thing. And, and, I mean, now they can figure it out a little bit with DNA, especially the daddies don't like to figure it out. You know why they don't like to be figured out? Because then they got a... a, a Start paying money to support the support the children. <laughs> Back in the old days, one guy he come in he come in the mission over there, and 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 he says, uh, "I got eighteen children with six different women," and he laughed. He lower than a snake. He's a scum of the earth. Crawling in and out of back doors, getting women pregnant, and then probably when the check time comes around, he probably come in here, got his hand out, trying to get some of the check too. That the government, you and I, that we're the government. The government are paying for that welfare check for them children, and that skunk going in there, and and even I mean, you said why can you? I I seen it. I've been working around poor folks for 50 years. I know all about that. Judge not that you be not judged. You to, well, just remember that. Excuse me. Judge not that you be not judged. Matthew 7, 1. Let's say it. Judge not that you be not judged. Amen? Amen. We, 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 we'd be good to memorize that and, and stay with it. Don't you think? Yeah, I like it. 
Verse 2, for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. Watch out. You know who's speaking here? Now, it really doesn't. It, well, it does matter. It's Jesus. But it's the Bible. And the Bible is authoritative. Whether it's Jesus speaking or some other, uh, uh, some 40 to 45 authors that he chose to write, write the Bible. Either they're speaking or he is, but it's all the word of God. That's why this Bible I'm preaching from, this, this big uh, giant print Bible I'm preaching from, it's a red letter edition. I don't like red letter editions. And the reason I don't, because many people think the red letters that are supposed to be the words of Christ, and most of the time they are, uh, are, 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 a lot of people take them as they're more authoritative. That's like a lesbian uh, uh, preacher coming to our chaplain's meeting. I used to be the head of the chaplains in Daytona Beach. I was was a chaplain 25 years, and I was in charge of it the last 10 years I was there, and then I retired a couple years ago, one on three years now. A lesbian coming there trying to get in the chaplains, and one of the chaplains, we were we, we questioned them about their faith and all that, and, 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 and one of the chaplains asked, we asked them questions, you know. First of all, she come from St. Augustine. Now, why would, it, why would someone come from St. Augustine, a, a so-called preacher, preacher woman, why would she come to, from St. Augustine to Daytona Beach to be a police chaplain? Police chaplains go out on death calls and they got to be, I, I, you know, I got I to gotta call them and I was in charge of the chaplain. I had to call someone, go here, go there. Someone died, this and that. We got trouble, go over here. We all got to go over here. They got a riot situation or different things, whatever, you know, we got to go. And, uh, I can't call someone in St. Augustine. <laughs> By the time they get here, the, the dead person going to be dead and buried before they get over here to visit the family, you know. So, But anyway, one of the chaplains asked her that question. Uh, how do you, and, and I mean, we didn't, like, accuse her or anything. She looked like a man. And and uh, you can, a lot of time you can, and, and what they do nowadays is they even take hormones to get hair to grow on their face, and they uh, and they have operations and, and some of them very detrimental. They 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 get fooling around with their plumbing, and they really get messed up, man. Yet I mean it's crazy, it's crazy when you go against nature and you and you go against God. But she says, well, the Bible. She says, just went to the Bible. Jesus doesn't speak against homosexuality. It's God's word. And Jesus is the word. The word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. So it's okay. Because it's not in the red letters here. You know, but anyway, how to get on that. <laughs> By the way, I didn't judge that woman. She told on herself. <laughs> And I remember <laughs> Bishop Freeman. He says, a couple of chapters and then Bishop Freeman. I, I saw him at the getting an X-ray here. I must have been four or five months ago. He's sick now. He's old, he's older than I am, but he ain't feeling that well. Bishop Freeman says, I, "What do you think, Bishop Freeman?" He said, "He says all I got to say." is lesbianism and preacher don't go together. Don't go together. That's all That's all Bishop Freeman said. He was the elder there, older than all of us. But <laughs> he had a lot of people under him too in his, in his denomination and things, various denominations are there. So lesbianism and, and uh, police chaplain or police chaplain is supposed to be a man of God. Christian go by the Bible. Bible's supposed to be our and, and, and but she's gonna say change the Bible. So anyway. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Watch out, because you're gonna have the same yardstick on you, same judgment on you, you be judging others, amen. For why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? 
but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye. Oh, that's interesting. A moat, um, uh, not, the, it says the moat, moat sounds big. When I, I, you know, when I first read this and I was first saved in that, and you think of a moat as a, I think of a moat as a, as a big pit in that, like a water pit or something, a moat. And I, I thought of it as big, but a moat is actually, it's a speck. It's the speck. And so Victor get a speck, a speck in his eye. And I get all over him. That is in your brother's eye, but consider us not the beam that is in thine eye. Now, the beam, that's a big thing. That's a big log. So we as preachers or we as Christians sometimes, we got our own sin to deal with that are big, and yet we're going pick to so pick at this and pick at that and pick at the other thing. Watch out. Watch out. Verse 4, Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, the beam is in thine own eye. Yeah. Verse 5, Jesus says, Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. So, when we, when we get the big sins out of our, that's the beam, that's the big sin. We get the big sins out of our life, we can help others. We can be an encouragement in a, in a, in a blessing to them. We, we, we just don't become a, a, a hypercritic, eating them up and, and telling tales all over town. Huh? Amen? Yeah. Amen. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under thy feet. I quit a talk show. I was on a talk show for several years. Shouldn't have been. It was a mistake. People on the talk show weren't Christian. They were very, very liberal. And um, they used to like poke fun at God, poke fun at the preacher, poke fun at the Bible. That, that's, that's why they had me on there. And the moderator of the show, who run the show, the issue of abortion came up. The curse and sin of America, the murder of innocent babies over a million years. On our electronic sign out here in front in Ridgewood, it says abortion is murder. Yeah, I got it on right. I'm sign. You, you, you. Take a look at that sign. There's a lot of good stuff on there. You look at that. There's a lot of different things flash up there. You can see it coming both ways, way down the street. Nice sign. And uh, abortion is murder. So, um, give not to that which is holy on the dog. So, I said, abortion is murder on his live, live, live talk show. He couldn't cut it out. It wasn't recorded, and then you can cut it out and just, you know, cut the whole deal out. I took off my headphones, and I... I hung him over the microphone and I got up and walked out. Didn't say a word, never to return. That was a year or two ago. And I thought of this verse. In fact, I sent it to the, to the moderator of the show. I sent this verse to him. Give not to that which is holy unto dogs. <laughs> Neither cast ye your pearls unto swine. That's pretty heavy speaking, isn't it? That ain't Vargas speaking. That's Jesus speaking. You understand? Least they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. So I, I wasn't too bright. I was on there with heathen people. And I finally woke up when he demanded me. You, you watch out these people that are demanding you what you can say. and what, what It's starting to happen in America today in politics. Watch out. People demanding what you do and what you say. It's dictatorship. Yeah, it is. Give not to that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under feet. There's some people ain't worth talking to. There's some people, you say, oh, you should talk to everybody. No, there's some people I shouldn't give the time of day. Because Jesus told me, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. 
neither cast ye your pearls before swine, dogs, uh, pigs. <laughs> I like to eat the pig, but they're a dirty animal. <laughs> they sure taste good, though. At least they trample on their feet. Verse 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Wow. Ask, seek, knock. Verse 8. For every one that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Isn't that good news? Wow. But you don't remember, look, that's conditional. It, there's conditions on it. There's conditions of obedience. Yeah. There's conditions. You can't just ask for anything and get it because a lot of times in, uh, in our sinful human state, a lot of times we'll ask for things that aren't, we shouldn't be asking for. Yeah. Verse 9. For what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, he will give him a stone? We, we give to our kids the best we can. My kid's hungry, my grandkid, anybody, especially my close family, but anybody, really. I'm not going to give them a rock when they ask for bread, amen? Verse 10, or if he ask a fish, you give him a serpent. No. Verse 11, if, that, if, if ye then, being evil, you and I, evil, know how to give good gifts unto our children, how much more... Shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? See, so we can ask, get good things from God. Isn't that wonderful? Verse 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. The law and the prophets. So, the... Uh, this is also called the golden rule. The golden rule. Now, this is the sermon. This is all the sermon, but this is the main part of it here in 13 and 14. Enter ye not at the straight gate. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And money there be which go thereat. People are going through the wide door. In, 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 in the wide door, uh, you, you know what the wide door? That's just do whatever, uh, do whatever you want. Be a free spirit. Pay no attention to God's word. Don't listen to the commandments of God. And you, you, the wide road leads to destruction. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So that means, I texted this out, I think yesterday maybe, yesterday before, I texted out uh, Acts 10 today. But, few find it. That means most people are going to hell. That's what I put in my text. A few going to heaven, most going to hell. Not pleasant, but that's the way it is. That's, that's, that's the way it is. Verse 15, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but in the are ravening wolves. There's all kinds of false prophets. They're on television. They're in pulpits. They're all around. False prophets. Now, remember this. We're dealing with false prophets. Remember the, the scriptures tell us, Satan himself shall come as an angel of light. How much more his ministers, Satan's ministers, as ministers of righteousness. Watch out. Uh, ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or th of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Verse 18, 7. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring. That means that if a true preacher, they're going to bring forth good fruit. If it's a false teacher, they're going to bring the wrong thing. They're going to lead you to hell. Watch out. Every tree that 
bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire, hell fire. Therefore by their fruit ye shall know them. Yeah. But every one that saith unto me, listen, this is big, verse 21. Not every one that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Many will say to me in that day, verse 22, Matthew 7, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in their names? We've got a lot of them today do that. And in my name have cast out devils. And in my name done many wonderful work. See, there's devil's preachers that claim to be ministers of God that can do miracles. Yeah. Just because someone can do a miracle don't mean they're God's preacher. They might be the devil. You've got to check them out. You've got to be careful of them. And then will I profess unto them, false preachers, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Verse 24, Matthew 7. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto him a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Who is the rock? The Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the rock. That song we sung in Sunday school, Jesus is the rock of my salvation. His banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. His banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. His banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. He lifts me up in the heavenly places. His banner over me is love. He lifts me up in the heavenly places. His banner over me is love. He lifts me up in the heavenly places. His banner over me is love. His banner over, love, over me is love. Yeah, Jesus is the rock. <laughs> and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. Talking about the sand of false teachers and false religion and Jesus, the rock of Gibraltar. Just a comment on that. You know, uh, you've got, uh, uh, you, you've got uh, the, uh, ah, what was I going to say? I was almost... That's the trouble with this Facebook. They shoot up stuff and balloons and love you and all that stuff. And it, it, I don't know how to get rid of that. I wish I could, but it, it knocks my attention off sometimes, like it just did. <laughs> Let me read this again and I get my thought back again. Now, don't you can keep putting them stuff up. I ain't mad at you or nothing. It just knocked my attention off for a minute. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat upon the rock, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. Oh, here's my here's my thought. You know the Roman Catholics' false teaching, and I was talking about someone today because I was studying uh, Matthew. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Revelation 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I said at the end, end, end of the Bible. It talks about the great whore. Most Bible expositors and good Bible teachers all down through the history say the great whore is the Catholic Church. That's what they say, the great whore is the Catholic Church. Oh, you're talking against the Catholic Church. The Pope they got now is supposed to be the vicar of Christ, Christ on earth. He don't even believe you have to believe in God to go to heaven. In May of this year, look at his little homily. Google it up there. You can get, you can get the little homily, he said. He said, in order to go to heaven, you don't even have to believe in God. All you have to do is be a good person. Now the Bible says there's none good. So how could you be a good person? El Papa, the Pope. There ain't no hope in the Pope. I guarantee you that. El Papa. Nah. <laughs> the Pope. They say. You see, but they don't study the Bible. They say Peter is the rock. 
No. Petros, that's a pebble. Jesus is the rock, the rock of Gibraltar. Peter or Petros, that's a little pebble. Pebble can't be a foundation, can it? You've got to have a foundation, stone, rock of Gibraltar. <laughs> Fall upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. The scribes were phony and they were false teachers, hypocrites. Jesus had authority. You know, you and I, if if, if we come in the power of the, of the Holy Ghost and, and come in God's name, we can have the authority of the Word of God. My authority isn't me, it's the Word of God and what I can preach from the Word of God. That's what I preach. Church, these that are here and, and anyone... If you find something I'm preaching that ain't in the Word of God, you tell me about it. And uh, if I can't defend my preaching by the Scriptures, and you can show me different in the Scriptures, I'll apologize to you and I'll apologize publicly. I'll apologize to the church for it. Study carefully. And uh, I can preach the Bible with authority because God's given us the Holy Ghost so we can do it. So this is all authoritative. Not because it's red letter and because Jesus said it, but because it's the Bible. Everything in the Bible from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to Revelation 22. I think there's 24 verses in that. Every word in there is authoritative. Don't forget that. It has ever been ever settled in heaven. That's why you can't have 100 Bibles or 200 Bibles. You have one Bible. English language. King James Bible. Yeah. You only have one Bible. Settle heaven. And, and, the, and the last thing he tells us in the Bible, he gives that, whosoever will come and drink of the water of life freely, he said. But he says, if you change it, take your name out of the book of life. Don't add to it. Boy, all the, add to it the curses of me on you. There. Ooh, I don't want no curses. There. I don't want my name. There. I ain't going to mess with it. Amen. Great chapter. Read it over and over. 7, Matthew. Let's pray. Lord, thank you now. Precious Bible. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful truths here to help us. We've discussed tonight. But especially the great importance of the wide road to hell and the narrow road to heaven. We've got to follow the narrow road. The Lord Jesus Christ. We've got to repent. I have, April 4th, 1969. I hope you have. If you haven't, let's do it now. Let's do it now. You know if you're saved or not. Repent. Turn from your sins. Call upon the Lord. This is the prayer. Pray it with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. Shed your precious blood. On Calvary's cross, rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how, with an honest heart, I repent. I see my wicked way. I turn from it. And I call upon you in the shedding of your precious blood, and the power of the resurrection, the third day to save me, putting all my trust in you. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Amen.